Welcome to What's Left, a weekly political discussion challenging the mainstream left. I'm Eduardo Varca with Andy Lipson <laughs> from <Hello>. Mexico. <laughs> yes, Mexico City. <laughs> I'm in Mexico City. Uh, I'm stuck here in San How are you, Andy? I'm doing well. Uh, I'm getting ready to uh, go to New York City with uh, my partner and looking forward to the vacation. But uh, it's never it's it's never out of season to um, to complain about the Democratic Party. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about complaining about the Republican Party? <laughs> uh, it's easy. That's easy. That's like that's like coal in my stocking. A gift. A gift is to is to is to drag the Democrats into the mud since they're doing it to us. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we should start off with just telling folks that to please be very forgiving for the 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 slow connection or any other um, faulty um, technical te technicalities of the of the video. Right. So last week we had discussed that we were going to talk about a topic. You and I, not maybe we didn't say it to the public audience, but you and I had discussed that we were possibly just going to commemorate as right. uh, uh, senior. However, someone changes on me last minute. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we going to be discussing about today, Andy? Just say it quickly. Um, well, um, I think you can say something about uh, George Bush. Um, if you want to say any final words, may he rest in peace. Um, but uh, <laughs> but it's about the Green New Deal. Um, that's the uh, Alexandria right. Ocasio Cortez's um, plan that she's pitched to the Democratic Party for starting this committee mm -hmm. that would uh, propose uh, a Green New Deal for the United States, greening the mm -hmm. economy, a growth plan, a a um, uh, it's a plan around economic justice of um, right. of um, talks about the racial disparities and racism and the effect of the environment disproportionately found on on communities of color, and it's a, ostensibly it's a plan to address that. Yeah, and it's um, oh, sorry, can I? And you know, a lot of people are a lot of leftists. You know, Naomi Klein. People who've been critical of the Democratic Party in the past, socialists, are, you know, kind of giving it a uh, a pass and saying, well, maybe she can't accomplish this, but it, but it's a really up, it's an inspiring new hope, um, and I disagree, um, but uh, uh, you know, that's what we I wanted to talk about. All right. Uh, let's mention though uh, that this is actually not new in 2009 there was a democrat already that had discussed about this uh, a green new deal so-called green new deal and it was about moving from fossil fuels to renewable energy as well except alexander ocasio cortez's green new deal um spearheaded by her but very well supported by bernie sanders a uh, Bill McKibben, very well known in the climate justice community, uh, as well as um, uh, many of the, the, especially the four very popular newly elected uh, Congresswomen, um, Rashida Talib, yep. um, uh, Ayanna Presley, uh, and uh, Omar. I forget the first name, but Omar is the other one. That, yep. that these four women are very right now the strongest um, in the media. They make up a lot of appearances. But it, it's 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 not new. It has been actually been proposed before, except now they're just expanding on it. I I think that what is going to um, more than uh, more than um, from previous, um, I think that this is going to be one of the um, what do you call that, Andy? The litmus test. Litmus test. Lit yeah. Litmus test. You know, whoever is going to be. Uh, especially on the Democratic Party side, will have to, um, will, will, the candidates will have to uh, abide by or by uh, see if they, they're, they're in alignment with the New Green Deal, is what I suspect, because it will be pretty much on that um, uh, deadline. It will be ready for that deadline. Um, I, I see it differently, um, although I do think that the, the only... Truly, the only, there's only two concrete things in this proposal, and the one you point out is that is this deadline of January 
2020. And I do believe that this new Green Deal that's being proposed by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the progressive uh, Democratic, the newly supported by the, the, the new Democrats. The Democratic left. left. Yeah, yeah, Democratic left uh, that's in it. Um, that it, it, will, it will in no way, in my mind, provide an actual litmus test of supporters. It's going to be put out as red meat um, for the elect for the elected electorate um, as saying that we we are for this and our and Trump. It's it's an it's an attempt to try to beat Donald Trump and galvanize a progressive left base underneath the Democratic Party. Um, in the fact, you know, because this is what they were unable to do in, in the Hillary Clinton election, um, and so I I do see it's organized around the elections, but not as a means of putting a litmus test or putting any sort of, um, uh, it's not putting the feet to the fire of the, of the Democratic Party candidate. It's basically um, a lie being told to the people who would be uh, being asked to vote for Democrats that this is what we stand for. We stand for a cleaner environment. We stand for uh, uh, social justice with, within the economy. These Livable things, wage. Yes. Uh, uh, these things are lies in them. In the, in the, there's lies in the plan itself, which I can get to, but it is a, it's a lie that's, that's being started right now as a means of trying to shepherd people into the Democratic Party from the, ver, from the very left wing, whose role was to shepherd people in the Democratic Party. And unfortunately, the fact that a socialist is spearheading it makes it even that much more... Um, uh, a democratic socialist. Yes. The, well, but, you know, she calls herself... So, I mean... There's nothing revolutionary about this, and and you're absolutely right to say that this has been proposed before. But it it hasn't just been proposed before; it's actually been done before in in South Korea. Um, in South Korea, has had about ten years of greening, using uh, the green green growth by pretty much a pretty conservative president of South Korea has been doing this for about the last ten years. And the effect of this green growth has been yes, a growth in their their economy, no question. Um, but it's meant a doubling, a doubling of the nuclear power. It's meant a whole a, a series of land reclamation projects, which have basically taken land from people and put them under the auspices of, of, the, of corporations and the government. It's, le it's led to a whole um, wiping out of the natural course of the way rivers are running. Um, and it went from, essentially for renewable energy, they went from 2% use to 6% use over 10 years of so-called green growth in South Korea. Um, mm. And they still are forty percent reliant on coal. Uh, they have the largest coal factory in the in the in the country. I mean, no, in the world. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, green growth for the for South Korea is exactly what it will what it would be, not just for the United States, but for any country under capitalism. It's basically a, a it's a greenwash. It's a it's it's saying the the green terms, but what it really means is um, unsus non sustainable methods for. Uh, making profits and for using the environment as you see fit while trying to tell the lie that you're not doing that. Um, so of, that's, of that's what, that's what the green growth program would be if we actually like tried to do it. And I don't think, I mean, there's questions over even whether they'll pass this, but it's, it, it's a lie on top of a lie here. Yeah. According to uh, proponents of this green new deal, it is supposed to be a, a 10 year term plan uh, whereby they can meet this, uh, the ICC, I, IPCC? IPCC, Wait, yeah. IPCC, right? Uh, the, the IPCC's uh, recommendation um, for, for us to hit the mark before we go into cross the, 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 the barrier where we are basically not able to revert much of the climate gauss and change that has been happening. That is 12 years. And that's why this plan is 10 years. So I'm just wondering if the South Korean plan is similar in the sense that this Green New Deal is trying to uh, reach achievements within 10 years span to be able to meet some of the IPCC's recommendations for us to, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, revert or yeah. uh, stop more of fossil fuel burning and carbon emissions um, that are warming the planet. Yes, those same 
It wasn't the exact same targets, um, but it has the same language. Not as much the language around the racism, um, and right. but but the but the it's 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 very much all the around the. I mean, South Korea has had a problem with um, with the pollution in their cities, and uh, the the president, this president, who was basically like I said, the president of Hyundai, his nickname nickname is the bulldozer. Um, basically, was using this green plan to sell what really is just an economic growth plan. Um, mm. And it's being sold the same way this this Ocasio Cortez. We will be leaders of the green uh, of the greening of the globe, um, and we will use that to um, to 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 spearhead uh, economic change across the globe while while ensuring jobs for South Koreans and things like that. So this is why you've seen a doubling of nuclear power uh, plants from twenty one to forty two in that time over that ten years. Because that's been one of the ways. It's not through renewable energy. That's been one of the ways they've been trying to meet their uh, any sort of green uh, carbon tar carbon uh, targets that they've set. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so it's like, uh, it, but th this is important to understand. Is like the if you look at every one of the groups that is being, every one of the committees, the subcommittees that are being formed to um, to investigate this, the first. The first people on the list, and this is in Alexandria Ocasio Cortez's plan. The first people on the list is always business leaders. It's always like that's the first one on the list on every grouping. It's business is at the table because this is not this is not a plan for saving the environment. It is a plan for U.S. economic competition against you know against China against Russia. Um, if to the extent that there's any plan in it that it would be green, that's how that's how um, South Korea has done it, and it's had. Absolutely. Not only has it had no effect on the environment, it's had a, a, a devastating effect on the on the environment uh, in South Korea in terms of uh, in terms of how it's changed the land there in South Korea. Um, so that's why it's a greenwash. Um, you've heard the term greenwash before. Can you tell us what greenwash is? Well, greenwashing is generally a term used for say com companies like Chevron, um, who would had this whole. Uh, you know, a bunch of commercials like, do people care about the environment? People do, where they would talk about these different things that they would do to basically protect the environment. Um, and there was an element of truth in it <laughs> in terms of, you know, uh, they might spend a few thousand dollars for doing something around butterflies while they spend millions of dollars to build an advertising campaign. That's who, that, and the millions of dollars for the advertising campaign are spent to, to hide the billions in profits that they're making at the expense of the environment. As they basically broke clean air laws, uh, clean water laws, and were the biggest polluters, you know, were some of the biggest polluters. I think DuPont, another greenwashing company, um, which basically sold itself as doing green things while destroying the environment. Um, and it's basically a, it's it's just false. It's false advertising. It's lying. It's what corporations do. Um, they lie about what they do because they know that they can sell more things if they say that they're doing it in an environmentally friendly way. And they're not held in any way accountable by the U.S. government, um, and they're allowed to tell these lies. So this is not greenwashing of a. This is not a single company greenwashing its own reputation. This is. These are now countries greenwashing their entire economy, basically lying about what it's going to take for their economies to run, and saying you can do it in a. Saying you can have a growth economy under capitalism, in, in an environmentally friendly way, in a way that actually. Uh, lowers the divide between rich and poor in a way that uh, reduces the effects of racism and sexism and oppression. That is a, an, that cannot be done under capitalism if you're going to maintain profits because profits are predicated on destroying the environment, on, uh, on, on, on creating a greater divide between rich and poor. That's how this system works. So, um, uh, and there's only really, well, I'll get into the whole notion of a new deal, which is a different, another lie. There are so many different lies in this Green New Deal um, that it's hard to keep track of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think back to Roosevelt because this is where the the term the New Deal uh, had started. Right. Uh, this is Alexandria Ocasio Cortez's attempt, and Bernie Sanders as well, to introduce something where by Progressivism is is trying to uh, cater to 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 the public for jobs, livable wage, and it includes healthcare, mm -hmm. and 
it, it takes into account um, uh, it takes into account the environment. I even was hearing Media Benjamin, which is a very act, is an activist against uh, many of the nuclear and uh, 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 nuclear wars. And Media Benjamin was saying that the only thing missing in it is the militarism to against the militarism uh, uh, as some of the largest polluters on the planet. But the thing is, what I'm trying to say is, it's this it's this deal that is is, is strong that. That has that uh, reminiscent to the Roosevelt times of the New Deal for very similar things um, for uh, 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 for the USA. Yes, it is absolutely trying to hearken to that same social base, political base that that thinks of Roosevelt as a person who was trying to do the working people good, and harkens back to the days of the Democratic Party. I mean, that's that. The Democratic Party's entire reputation of being a party of the working people is based on its connection to FDR. Um, and this New Deal, the Green New Deal, is attempting to hearken to that language. Um, I guess I'll ask you a question about this. Um, I mean, in your mind, because I, I have some thoughts on this, what was, what was Roosevelt's reason for doing the New Deal? Uh, that means Social Security, uh, health care to the extent that they... Uh, 40, 40, 40 hour work week, unemployment insurance, jobs yeah. programs, um, bank regulation. Why did Roosevelt do that? Was it because he, because he got elected by people to do that? There was a threat. I, I had read there was a threat by socialist groups outside of this part. I had read some that, that this was partly because, uh, there was a riot movement to create something when when there was a excuse me there was a rising movement uh, proposing this that was a threat to the Democratic Party that gave uh, these uh, the Democratic Party that Roosevelt had decided to be able to bring back the base back to the Democratic Party otherwise you had you were going to have a bunch of socialists <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it, it was it was the Communist Party, the Socialist Party, but there were mass working class strikes, general strikes in '34. I mean, the context for the for the New Deal is between thirty years thirty two and thirty eight and thirty nine, um, and uh, in that six or seven year period, there was one New Deal that was a, a minor New Deal, and the bigger New Deal doesn't come until thirty six or thirty seven, after this major strike wave. It was essentially people were really yeah. It was and, on and, the street. right. I was just commenting that this is when around the Great Depression was happening, and the massive strikes was happening on the streets, and that is when people started syndic syndicatos syndicates syndicates. You know, trade unions. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, it's when um, syndic. Uh, large syndicates uh, forming, uh, there was forming or support uh, because of the strikes uh, um, for a better living wage. The, the Great Depression was really the economic downfall of this capitalism in this period of time that Roosevelt saw, as you had mentioned, wrote or, you know, that the Roosevelt as a threat to their 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 leadership, their 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 their, their party, what was going to happen to them? That this is what I I I, I learned. That that I'll leave it at that. If you can go. Yeah. Because um, I, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. But we'll, I'll patch this together as best best I can. Um, the um, yeah, I mean he. It wasn't just he was trying to save the Democratic Party. It, it, what, what he was trying to save was he. He was saying he was trying to save the profit system. He, there was there was literally there was literally a concern that there was going to be a revolution in the United States on the on the context of a whole wave of general strikes in the in the thirty four, and then in thirty six and thirty seven you have this wave of sit down strikes, occupations of auto plants and things like that, and workers going huge level of militancy. Uh, it's like the yellow vests. It's like the yellow vest movement in France, but inside the city. Like, mm -hmm. um, and National Guard is 
police are being brought in to take these things down and the police are being beaten off the streets. National Guard is having to come into cities to try to, but they're not, they can't force the National Guard to uh, get the workers because they're not sure if the National Guard will actually take them out. Um, so they have to basically surround them and they have to make concessions to workers and eventually get them to, you know, give up in a sense. Um, but make, they had to make many, many concessions to these, to these movements um, to foreclose the notion of a revolution happening in the country, but give workers just enough to uh, make them feel like their demands are met. Maybe not the demands of the radicals, but the demands of the people who, who, who fell short of that. Um, and that's why, I mean, if, if, for, for Naomi Klein to think that the hope for the environment rests with this group within the Democratic Party is such a, is a huge fiction. The hope for the environment, if it rests anywhere in this world, it rests with movements like that are going on the yellow with the yellow vests. The very people who are being said who are who are who environmentalists would claim are anti-environment. That's the hope for the that's the hope for the environment. Is is a movement like that spreading across the working class to take down the system. That's it. It doesn't exist within the halls of the Democratic Party, and it certainly won't happen within the context of the Democratic Party um, unless there is struggle that forces them. And what the, what Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and their ilk are doing is basically telling people we don't have to struggle because I think most people will probably think like you do, Eduardo, which is oh, this is going to be this plan is going to be imposed as a litmus test on a future Democrat. It, it's not a litmus test on a Democrat. It won't hold them. They're not hostage to it at all. It's going to be used to tell people you don't have to fight for this because it's coming in 2020 when you elect a new Democratic Party president. And now that's if. Pelosi goes for it because the other part of this, I mean, we'll get back to the New Deal, is the composition of the committee is uh, is like 15 people in the committee. Nine of those nine of those people are going to be appointed by Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, which uh, they're very much of that establishment. Well, Alexandria Casio Cortez is endorsing Nancy Pelosi for the for the for the speech. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. I mean. It's it's a done deal. Like it's it that the only way that and it, it won't even come from a Democrat. The only way we're going to actually see this is a level of struggle commensurate with what we see with the yellow vest, but literally centered in urban centers, not not surrounding the urban center, but centered in the urban centers. A level of struggle like that in our country, and then we're going to start to see all sorts of deals being being cut for us. But it might be from a Democratic president. It might be from a Republican president because it's because both of them are. Both of them are for protecting are for protecting the system, um, and the only way we're going to get something is is a massive strike wave in this country um, that ultimately has to take down the system. I mean, that's the, that's the other part of this New Deal piece that has to be understood is most people think that it is definitely true that the conditions of the depression, in the context of the struggle that was set off by those conditions of the depression, promoted uh, FDR to pass these, this legislation, um, that social security, unemployment, things like that. But what is not true is that these things did not lead to the end of the depression. They did not solve the economic crisis of the lack of profits. Um, like it was harder to get profits. Countries were basically having to protect their borders more. There was a lot, much more protectionism going on during this time. There was a rise of national, what we call nationalism and, um, the kinds of things we see today. It was not these policies of FDRs that led to the end of the depression. Do you know what led to the end of the depression? I s the no, I I I, I don't know what and led and led to the end of the depression. I think I mean I think most economists will understand that it was two parts. It was World War Two. First, it was. Obviously, I, yeah. a massive, a massive flux, flux of, of government money into new jobs programs because you have you are now having state-run industries for building tanks and all sorts of weapons and things like that. But it wasn't just the empl the employment of people as soldiers or the employment people uh, for a war economy. It was the actual physical destruction of all this excess stuff that had been produced under capitalism that had to clear the way for new profits to be made. So. This is what people have to understand is World War II did not, did not end the Depression by giving people jobs to go to war. It actually 
eradicated all the extra stuff that capitalism had built that made profits hard to come by through the act of war itself. It was part, it was the, it was a, it was an actual crisis. It was a crisis of war that allowed capitalism to rebuild itself after World War II. But under the, like with a 50 million person body count underneath that. And that's, that's what's going to solve the new, no new deal is going to make this, the economy work under capitalism. It's going to be World War III, with, and with the with the the hope of somehow surviving that, that is going to be that's how capitalism solves its own crisis or solves its own uh, lack of the ability for it to make pro to, for profits to be found, um, and the it, there where there's no Green New Deal or non Green New Deal that's going to get us out of this out of this situation of. Capitalist crisis is due to profits become, becoming harder and harder to come by because there's so much stuff out there. Eventually, it gets to the point where it has to destroy all that stuff or much of it, and it leads to these wars. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the that's the myth. That is the myth. That's the the last lie they tell, which is that this new deal is going to get us out of this economic crisis we already are in. There's you know. Uh, was it? Chris Hedges um, wrote an article that, talking about how there have been reports that out of the last economic crisis, uh, 2008, that it wasn't $10 trillion given to the banks or even $15 trillion given to the banks, but U.S. banks themselves were floated lar up to $30 trillion to basically refinance themselves. And they made, and all this is funny money, it's just printed money. It is believed, he, he basically is saying, that on a global scale, almost $200 trillion of money was floated out there to keep, allow these banks to survive. But that's just waiting for the next, uh, uh, the next crisis to come up again with this whole uh, essentially um, you know, false, false zero-valued money keeping banks afloat and keeping the wealth, wealthy afloat. Um, and there's going to be another economic crisis. It's going to be deeper and, and more protracted than the one we just last had. And um, that whole thing is going to knock out any notion of some sort of uh, jobs program that needs to be, uh, that needs to, to, what is it, to, that needs to raise the level of the, of the poor and lower the level of the wealthy. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's just not possible under capitalism because the crisis always forces them to go back to we have to recover profits at all costs and profits always have to come at the expense of workers. Yeah, I agree. I, I feel personally, I feel um, a little split because as, I had, as we had mentioned before in a previous video uh, about um, climate change, that ultimately to be able to do what the IPCC has recommended for us to um, uh, continue contaminate, for us to stop contaminating the planet and be able to restore some parts of the environment and to stop continuing the mass extinction uh, of that are daily, where uh, species are being extinct daily now. It, I have said that it cannot be done under, under capitalism. That is how I feel split. Now, there's the other side of me that we feel like I'm just reverberating back things I have said in previous videos. But for new listeners, uh, here you go again. I feel as if we are in the current system that we are in and people are taking leadership like these you know, Charlie's Angels, these four, <laughs> are, uh, you know, these, these, these four heroines that are working within the system. And it's just, I just feel there is, where is the leadership in our government? There isn't. And there are the, the attempts at trying to uh, work within the system. And then I... Cognitively, cognitively, intellectually, know that it just—it's—it's it's very much like this fifteen-year-old or fourteen-year-old girl. I don't know if you know this. Her she name spoke is at the UN. Greta Gothenburg. Yeah. I think that is how you pronounce her name, and she is not even 
She did not even want to go to school. She is now missing a day of school on Fridays, I think, and she sits in front of Parliament because she feels that they're not even doing enough. And Sweden is a very progressive country, but she's not only doing that, she's also talking to people and she's calling people's BS and she's saying, you're not doing enough. There is, this is not, and she said something which resonated with me. I am don't have to go back to school because my future is lost. I don't have to go because to become a climate change activist or a scientist because <clears throat> we, their solutions are there already. And I don't have to uh, talk about solutions because we know the solutions. It's something else. And she said, the system has got to change. That is what she said. And... That is where I feel it's, I, I know it to be true that under capitalism, what is capitalism is, is for profit. That's and how things you, run. They, you just will not be able to have something humanitarian within something that is trying to, a system that is, uh, the rules of the game are to win everyone for themselves. Right, and to treat humans as the human labor is the source of that profit and the human yeah. environment is, it's at the expense of the human environment that the profits are extracted. And that's just how the system works. It's like, that's the, that's the rules of the game. It's not up for discussion. You know, it's like, uh, that's just how capitalism works. Um, and, and that's, that's how the capitalists compete within the country and outside of the country. Um, and I will say that I understand what you're saying about this young woman who um, who is 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 trying to do her best and taking a stand, but f you have to understand, I I I don't think we can call people like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez a heroine. Um, to just <laughs> no, I'm sorry, but here, sir, hear me out for a second. Yeah. Let's remember, yeah. let's remember that only a month ago, she was allotting the people who were occupying the 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 the, the offices Nancy of Nancy Pelosi's Pelosi. Office. Calling people in the Sunrise Movement, calling people in the Sunrise Movement the, the, the hopes of our future. Now, let's be clear. The Sunrise Movement is a Democratic Party operation, okay? But that's beside the point. The people who are in it don't necessarily think that way. They think, oh, our activism matters. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says, you're the future. You know, you're doing the right thing. You're coming out against Nancy Pelosi. What does Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez do two weeks later? Endorses Nancy Pelosi, okay? But let's also remember that... Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is saying all this stuff in the context of a massive fight that's going on in France for the future of France. So it's not like there's nothing going on. Why isn't Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and these progressive Democrats, they, what would they, what, no, I'll at least say the socialists within there should at least be saying, you know what, it's not going to happen under this system. You want social justice, you want environmental justice, go and do what they're doing in France. Put on a yellow vest and shut down your city. That's the way you're going to do it. But you, I know you're laughing because it seems, but that's all they'd have to say because that's yeah. the truth. But they won't say that because they are more determined to protect the Democratic Party and to protect the system than they are determined to protect the environment and our future. They are willing to lie to us about that future for their own, for their own ambitions and for the Democratic Party because they're built into that system. They're now baked in. They're not fighting it. They're being it and they're trying to draw us in. So let's be clear. They know, they know what could do this and they're, they're physically not saying what needs to happen. They're, they're like ignoring it. And they're basically telling us to go into the Democratic Party, elect them, when there's literally a struggle right across the, across the pond that shows us how to get there. Yeah. I invite many, many people to question themselves as... I am putting myself in the public eye, developing myself on my positions. I continuously see myself evolving. Uh, and I'm pretty sure anyone listening to this is on the fence, Andy. And they must be feeling, I know, I am a reflection of many people who must be feeling that hopelessness in this two-party system in the USA or even 
the ruling class in other countries down south, across the globe, east, and that work within a capitalist system. Uh, I think that I hope that this is a moment for people to to realize that uh, there is there is nothing wrong with trying to figure out where to fit the puzzle pieces for oneself. I I'm not in disagreement with you, as I have said. Uh, I'm. I'm in, I'm in, I'm torn, it feels to me, that it feels that I'm willing to settle for less, it seems like. I, I'll just say that there is no, there's no settling for less under capitalism, unfortunately. That's what many people thought they were doing with the New Deal, even and revolutionaries. I don't know but I, I, what I mean by that. To say that. But what, no, but I, I don't <laughs> but, mean to, I mean, this is not a moral thing, Eduardo. This is not, I'm not saying, oh, yeah. you shouldn't settle for less. I'm saying it doesn't yeah. exist. What I mean by that is people who wanted change under the context of the New Deal back in the 30s and thought, okay, I'll settle for Social Security. It's not everything I want. Um, many of these laws didn't, didn't, weren't going to give uh, benefits to blacks or women. Okay, That was one of the things that, that happened back in the 30s. Um, and so that was part of the, the problem with some of these things. And be, people who settled not for just the reforms, but people who settled for not getting rid of the system, what it meant was they were on a path towards World War II. They didn't think that way. They didn't believe that. They thought this was going to, they thought the New Deal was going to bring back a recovery, but it didn't. By, two, by 1938, there was a new recession. And that new recession led essentially to the kinds of pressures that led to the conflict between U.S., Europe, and Germany, you know, within, within Europe, and the United States getting involved. So, there is no middle ground here. Capitalism doesn't allow it. Allow that middle ground. Doesn't allow us to kind of be like, all right, we'll just take this. Capitalism, if we keep it around, the path of the New Deal within capitalism, the New Deal today, is the path towards World War III. People have to understand that. That if we do not solve this riddle that this system creates by virtue of forcing growth models on us, right? Why is economic growth even important? The only reason we even talk about growth, whether it's green growth or not green growth, is because profits must constantly expand. That's a rule, that's a rule set. Yes. Yeah, that's a rule set under capitalism. That doesn't exist yeah. for humans. We don't have to constantly grow. We just need what we need. You know. Now, there are some communities that are going to require some growth after socialism that are going to require a built-in built infrastructure of, of clean water and clean energy or what, what have you. But... There's not a system that says we always have to expand, expand, expand. That doesn't exist for humans. That exists for capitalism. So the notion even of growth is an, as long as we are, are bound by, the, by this notion we always have to grow, whether it be green or whatever, then we are on a one-way ticket towards World War III or towards environmental collapse that's going to be driven by capitalism. And, and that's just the reality. Uh, so yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Andy. So... I think there are people who are like, well, I just, we need to, to try to find some, some ground that's not quite what they want, but that might, around which you find some shelter. There's no shelter here. Uh, that wasn't that's a famous song by somebody, but there's no shelter here. Um, the, the shelter is, is, te is tenuous and it's momentary and capitalism must always be moving and the fall, the collapse, like the reason... The reason that U.S. is running into China right now is not about Trump and President Xi. The reason that U.S. is running into Russia is not about Clinton and Putin. It's because of capitalism is a global competitive system, and the U.S. nation is a nation of corporate interests, just like the Chinese nation is a nation of corporate interests that are united only in needing to smash their own working classes in order to get profit. But ultimately, those two big systems are coming into collision against each other, and that collision is going to be one that's going to be decided on who will profit, who will win out over who. There is no safe space here unless we get rid of capitalism. And the only hope for that is not with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and she knows it. The only hope for that is are, the, are movements like the Yellow Vests, but, but much bigger and much more centered in urban centers, organized within the class, which is uh, within a working class that is no longer willing to accept any compromises other than getting rid of the profit system. To just quickly ask about what, what your, 
you said you said something about Esta, eh, Greta, uh, uh, Greta, Gruten. How what was oh, the Greta? No, no, the, 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 the Norwegian. This, you said something about her. What? Just that. I mean, I I I take her as being sincere. I mean, um, I. I don't think Alexandria Ocasio Cortez is sincere, but I think this like, other woman, young woman you're talking about, is sincere. Mm -hmm. um, and and people like her. I are think she's very young, but she's developing herself as well. We'll see where she. Yeah. She might just find disillusionment and even you know expecting something from Parliament. Right, and and there'll be people who will try to use her as well. And if she allows herself to be used, that that then that's unfortunate because this is not going to be settled by allowing politicians and corporations. Who have no interest in preserving the system? I mean, in uh, in saving the planet from environmental destruction or war. They don't care. What they care about exclusively is competition and the competition for profits and being on the top end of that. I want to, uh, since it's related, to just quickly brush up on the COP, um, what the the uh, Poland uh, climate change, uh, uh, the summit. Because because it's related, yeah. I I think that the expectations, the inequitable expectations that are being placed across many yeah. countries, is completely unfair. Yep. Expecting something from smaller countries, yep. or not even them. You know, I'm not talking about even in size. I'm talking just about in terms of the polluting. Correct. Who is polluting more than yep. others? There is this uh, just inequality uh, across, and it falls on the backs of disproportionately many uh, smaller mm -hmm. uh, people, uh, tribes, communities, uh, countries that don't emit uh, a lot of carbon. Right. Right. And. Emission. That, if there's one thing that I do agree with Naomi Klein's article, which we will post on here, is worth reading, is she came out four square and basically said that the first agreement in Copenhagen, Denmark, in 2009, I think it was, that was a climate change agreement. That was the first one that Obama was part of. She goes, that whole thing was a, just a, a, a gigantic sham to basically protect the interests of the wealthy countries at the expense of the poor. And that's what we saw with the Paris Accords is a similar thing. And now we're seeing it again in Poland. And it's all a massive greenwashing kind of a thing, which is to basically put create a political cover of protecting the environment at the expense of the imperialist aims of these of these large imperial powers, whether they be mm -hmm. Europe, United States, China. It's 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 them creating an excuse to extract even more profits and resources out of these out of these countries, immiserate them more, drive their economies down into the ground. You know, uh, helping their own. Here's my fucking phone. Sorry. Um, so it's uh, it, it it's the same it's the same story written over and over and over again from Copenhagen to Paris and now to Poland. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a ten year period. That's a ten year period in yeah. which nothing is being done, and yet I bet people think something's being done because. Oh, it's small steps, small steps in Copenhagen, small steps in Paris, small steps in... No, there are giant steps of allowing the global elite and the, and the global capitalists of the larger imperial powers being taken at the expense of the small countries. Those are the steps that are being taken. No small steps in the environment, giant steps of, of, of political control and economic control um, by, these, by these countries and being used in uh, the language of, of greening and carbon taxation and all that kind of stuff and carbon swapping being used to, as a cover for it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Ay, 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 Dios mio. <laughs> oh. I cannot fight on this one. Yeah, it's not, there's, I mean, it's hard, there's just, that's indefensible on these. What I can't are. fight on this one. I, 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 I used to be, I will reveal, I used to be a hardcore individual choice. You need to make sure you recycle everything. And as I got more and more informed, it's the individual parts of ourselves will not be able to uh, compete with the larger corporations that massively yes. 
right. and daily yes. are destroying this planet. And right. we don't have to agree about, and as we had said in another video, about whether it's fossil fuel emissions creating right. this global effect, the carbon, uh, global warming effect. But we definitely know that there is something to the climate, whether it's deforestations, Correct. whether it's right. polluting of the, of the sewage, sewage waters going Fracking. into the oceans and destruction of species and natural yep. habitats. Yep. And, uh, yep. you know, the, 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 it's, it's still in the same yep. uh, topic of climate yep. and environmental yep. chaos. Yes. Yes, I completely agree, and and that is why I think that we, if we are to team up with other people who question the scientific uh, data of uh, carbon um, uh, emissions and 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 the the warming of the planet, if we're to this, we can find common ground as to the the the, the conservation of natural habitat spa spaces. Um, and a cleaner use of energy um, to not pollute our resources, right? Well, and, and yeah, go ahead. I just feel that this is why I was telling you I cannot find disagreements with you because I, <laughs> you're right in this sense, but in the sense, but I feel that I'm it's like cognitive dissonance for me, I suppose, where. I want something done now. I want something done today. I want change. I want there to be a transformation. And I see this Green New Deal and not the only one that is after it for something that could potentially save our planet in this very dire time of a 12-year mark deadline to not... Uh, to try to revert um, much of the destruction that we have already done to this planet. I, I hear you on that, and I, I have the same sense of urgency around capitalism's destruction of the planet and capitalism's destruction of the conditions of, wor of workers across the globe. Um, yeah. But there, the, there is something being done today. It's happening in France, and it needs to be generalized across the globe, just like we were saying yellow vests being worn by people in, in Basra and uh, Belgium. Um, yellow vests need to be being put on in this country, in a sense, you know, and not being taken off until we have a revolution, essentially. Um, and the people most dedicated to delaying that are the people writing the committee around the, the, the Green New Deal. They, they are intentionally sticking a carrot out that can never be reached to draw us away from a solution. So yeah. they're the ones who want to delay this. There's no urgency for them. Um, the urgency for them is to drive people in the Democratic Party and uh, maintain the system as it is. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's very hopeful. <laughs> no, it's not. I, it is. I mean, I would just say <laughs> the hope is in us. And yeah. it doesn't look good right now in the United States because unfortunately most of us are caught up in some version of Democratic Party this socialists that are tailing Democratic Party. It's very bad. I mean, the situation on the left is direly, possibly historically bad in this country, possibly in the last more than 100 years, it's 150 years, it hasn't been this bad in this country, in my opinion, for how weak the left is, how, how little the working class sees itself as a class capable of shaping its own future. Um, and that will have to change or else we are done. I mean, that's... but. Uh, how that will happen, I don't know. And in that regard, I do feel some despair. I don't know how do we go from where we are to where we need to be. But there is something happening in Europe that people should be paying attention to. And those are people who are actually organizing to pay ta to, to stop taxes that were supposedly put out for protecting the environment. It's their very actions that are actually the hope for the environment. Um, not, not just that's the starting point for those actions. They have to get much bigger than, than where they are actually right now and like we talked about last time I don't that will not, that thing that's happening in France is not going to lead to a revolution but it but the type of militancy the type of determination that's what will have to happen here mm -hmm. well well AMLO uh, did I tell you that AMLO put up his uh, presidential um, private jet 
um, for yeah. sale in the USA. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. But I did not say it in pop in, in our video. Yes. Yeah. And and it, and uh, he puts uh, Los Pinos, which is the equivalent of the White House, in uh, he made it into a museum. So just to update people. So I'm going to visit Los Pinos, the museum. Imagine that, visiting the White House as a museum. Yes. You know? And Los Pinos, by the way, is bigger than the White House in the USA. So. And well, it's a very large, uh, very yeah. beautiful building. So I'm going to see it. So he's living in his own little house. I hope he is he's still a little mad person. Uh, and he's also cut the funding of uh, the, the diplomats. Uh, cut the social uh, lots of retirement funds to ex presidents, mm -hmm. and lastly, he's also well, not lastly, he's continuous, but there's so much more I can go. But he has also uh, created a, the department for the for the for the three students missing uh, mm. investigation committee, well, independent I, investigation. I think that's something else for us to maybe get to while you're in Mexico. Um, yeah, I think we're we also yeah. are talking about our questions. Um, I'm gonna. I've solicited some yeah, questions not, as well. Yeah, I was just saying, and you can cut that. I was no, just saying, I yeah. think that because yeah. you mentioned Mexico, and I thought, oh yeah, I yeah. forgot to tell you this in public. But I'm going to include. Anyhow, you. so go ahead. Yeah, anyhow, I was just I I want to I want to end by by stating we need to tell people to continue. I have some questions now. Finally, yeah. So I want to tell people that we will. Is it the so we have two videos in this month. Yeah. So is it is it going to be the first video or the second video? I th I would like to do our next we answer one. the questions. I would like to do our next video be about questions that we try to answer. All right, all right. Then we'll do it then. And so then, we should inform people. Please yeah. submit your questions uh, either through us personally as friends that listen to this personally or through uh, the blog that we have, the websites that we have. Right and. Uh, and what I'm doing and people who've reached out, I'm reaching out to is questions they might have for me, questions they might have for you, or questions right. they have for us, you know, kind of thing like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Uh, well, what did you want to say? Because I want to end by saying that the, the subscribe. Um, that's it. I just appreciate you uh, taking this time. I know you're very busy there. Like you said, your family is having <laughs> a tug of war over you. They all want a piece of Eduardo. Um, which I understand. That's good. Um, but um, I appreciate you taking this time. Yeah, I appreciate Andy for you being flexible because we had changed the times several times. So I thank you. Totally understand. This is holiday season right now. Um, have a great uh, holiday. You know, Christmas holiday period there. So you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it will happen. The Day of the Kings will happen in January. So okay. Uh, so we, we'll have then gifts for then. Okay. But we also have Christmas as well. Okay. All right, so for folks, please, new listeners, you can always find us on BitChute, uh, YouTube, iTunes, uh, Google Play, and Stitcher. Please subscribe, rate, review, and best of all, share it with everyone else. And we will see each other soon again through this Skype method. Yes, so everyone have happy holidays, yeah, and we'll see each other in about a week. We'll see you all in about a week and a half. Yeah, all, all right, right, Andy. Take care. Right. Uh,